as I explained to us leaders in earlier lectures. Now, in this lecture, I want to explain the remaining two oscillators. And remaining two oscillators are the first is Hartley oscillator, and second is Colpit oscillators. And why we study the Hartley oscillators? It is the most popular oscillators because it is used in radio frequency receivers. Or the most uh, important part is that it, it is easy to tune among all the oscillators and second its adaptability is to a wide range of frequencies that's why the Hartley oscillators is most popular oscillators so the most important part of any oscillators is a circuit diagram so we have to draw the circuit diagram the circuit diagram for Hartley oscillator What are the parts in case of oscillators? First is your transistor amplifier, as I already discussed, which kind of amplifier that is MP and common emitter transistor configuration is used and it is properly biased with these following resistance and capacitance. And one more, uh, uh, one different kind of radio frequency coil is used in this uh, Hartley oscillators. This is radio frequency coil. And what is the use of this radio frequency coil? It always block DC and pass the, it always block AC and pass the DC. Uh, it's block the AC blocks and pass DC. And this is your tank circuit. Tank circuit, as you know, this is the combination of capacitance and the inductance. And what is the difference in this case? This is connected through the coupling capacitors. These are the coupling capacitors C1, and here is also a coupling capacitor C2. So these are the different parts R1, R2. R E and C E. In this case, what is the difference? The difference is that this single coil is divided into two parts. Means how we can divide into two parts? That is central taped. Central taped. Or we can assume that two inductors are for, uh, connected in series like this. This is the use of the central tape coil. So the two parts are L1 here and L2 here. Now what is the combination for L1? L1 is connected to this collector through this uh, coupling capacitor C2 and other part of this L1 is connected to the ground or the ground terminal is common here. This is or this uh, part is connected to this uh, emitter circuit through this CE and RE. So this is the common terminal as I shown the ground here. And uh, what about the second coil? And the second coil is L2 and L2. One part of L2 is again connected to this part means uh, this part and other part is connected to this coupling capacitor to the input. Or we can say that L1 is connected into the output part and L2 is connected into the input part. This is in output section, this is input section. Again, what are the different parts? R1, R2, I already discussed in other type of oscillators. R1, R2 form the potential divider arrangement for the transistor. Again, it's the transistor replacement. And RE form the self, uh, self bias stabilization. Again, it's the Q point. And here CE to pass the AC block the DC means to avoid the signal degeneration or how we can avoid the signal degeneration means the feedback if this is not present here then there is no feedback to the input circuit and if no feedback then the gain of the amplifier will be reduced in this case we can uh, use the CE to avoid the signal degeneration again this C1 and C2 are the blocking capacitors this is um, blocking this blocks you already know this pass the uh, block this DC and pass the AC. This 
is the working of this uh, capacitance and this uh, connect this trace uh, this amplifier stays to the tuned circuit these are the construction part of this Hartley oscillators and working is same as that of uh, in case of tune collector oscillators or tune based oscillators so what is the working i have again revised the working of Hartley oscillators <coughs> when we switched on pcc pcc switched on it will change the ic of the this, uh, uh, transistor if will it will change the ic then it will charge the capacitor c2 if it will charge the capacitor c2 after charging the this capacitor this again charges capacitance of the tank circuit then when the this uh, capacitance of the tank circuit will be fully charged then it should be discharged through this uh, induction coil and this charging or discharging of the capacitor provide the frequency of oscillations in the tank circuit if we studied up to this part, then the kind of oscillations are damped oscillations. These are the kind of oscillations if we not connect this part to the input circuit. But when we connect this part or this feedback provided to this C1 coupling capacitor to the input signal, then the uh, shape of the oscillations are becomes to be undamped oscillations. This is the purpose of any oscillators we want to require the undamped oscillations not require the damped oscillations so this in this way we can obtain the undamped oscillations this uh, here we generate the frequency of oscillations 1 by 2 pi into l by c and by generating the oscillations then by from this this is feedback to the input signal and again the input signal increases in this way IB is increases IB increases then IC increases IC increases again it will increase the charging of the capacitors and uh, provide the oscillations in the tank circuit when the capacitor is fully charged it again discharges through this induction coils and produce a frequency of oscillation and this circuit is continue or this working is continue as we get the desired frequency of oscillations for our requirement and the output of this circuit will take upon uh, across the l2 l2 is connected mutually connected with the l1 and by changing the uh, inductance or the capacitance we can change the frequency of oscillations this is all about the Hartley oscillators and the second part is your culpit oscillators so uh, culpit oscillators uh, i have studied here or i will revise the hartley oscillators in case of culpit oscillators uh, if we change the if we convert or change the working of this inductance to the capacitance and capacitance to the inductance then hartley oscillators is change into the uh, culpit oscillators so i want to draw the circuit diagram for culpit oscillators what is the circuit diagram for culpit oscillators this part is remain same as i have shown here this is remain same and what is the changing part here the capacitance is divided into two parts means in this way the c1 or c2 Capacitance is divided into two parts and inductance will remain same. Means in case of Hartley, there are two L and one C. Means two inductance coil, one capacitance coil. But in case of culpit, culpit oscillators, there is two C and one L. This is the only change in case of culpit oscillators. Again, this is grounded. Again, I have to revise the working of this culpit oscillators. Culpit oscillator again, the circuit is same. So, I, uh, uh, I will not repeat this part. Only repeating part is this. Again, uh, will, it will charge the capacitor C1 here. And it will produce the oscillations. And uh, the tank circuit generate the frequency of oscillations. And the difference is uh, in case of Hartley oscillator, the frequency is... 1 by 2 LC and L in that case is L1 plus L2 plus 2M. L1 uh, and L2 plus 2M, 2M, M is the mutual coefficient. And in case of this uh, 
uh, Hartley oscillator C is equal to is the parallel combination of 1 by C1, C2. So the overall capacitance is C1 plus C2 divided by C1, C2. This is the value of C or C is equal to C1, C2 divided by C1 plus C2. This is the overall value of the capacitance. This is the only difference in case of Hartley oscillator and Colpis oscillator. So student, we have completed the oscillator part for according to your syllabus. And this is all about oscillators. Thank you.